seen him in the LCS for a while, but he seems one of the most well-rounded here in the North He America. is a yeah. guy that has been playing League of Legends since he was 11 years old. <laughs> I just yeah. made that up. But That's I'm pretty sure it's close to that. Close to accurate. It's either 11 or 12. Uh, but he's been playing League of Legends for a very, very long time. And he, so when you get these players that have been playing the game for so long, like Poe Belter, like Doublelift, uh, they play so many different champions and it's easy for them to transition uh, play style. So that's why we see a lot of, you know, versatility coming from him in the mid lane as well. Mm -hmm. And right now we're going to see how much of the versatility gets stifled with the bands coming through. So far, Flares will once again not get his Aurelia. Zion Spartan will not get Rise. No surprises there. Just taking things off the top with the exception of that one special uh, target ban on the Flares Aurelia. A very few players who will take bans like that, but that's one of them. All right, well, going to match that top lane ban with the Rise ban. We're seeing so much focus on these two just because uh, Flares, Flares specific ban there for the Aurelia. Mm -hmm. Going to leave up the big ones like Rumble, uh, Maokai, Nar, those standard top lane ones that we've been seeing. The other thing though, of course, Sivir, Ash, both still up. Uh, Double Lift has played 50% of the Ash in North America. That's I true. believe we have four total games. He's won both times. He's also 100% of the Ash wins. Yes, very true. Maybe even more important. So, Z I actually want to see Zion bring out Riven. He's not going to this one, but Saber first pick is going to be some nice utility for CLG. I second that. Here, here, Freak. We need to yep. see some solo Riven plays in North America. We have so many solo lane players in the North American LCS that love the champion, but won't bring it out. Only, only Smeb gets that honor. <laughs> we see it in LCK, and that's it. We're just uh, going to have... Uh, we play to mid. Yeah, exactly. See solo laners, mid or top. Yeah. Viable in both. Uh, I think the first Western player to bring it out is going to be Febivin. It's like literally what he named his account after. Yeah. So we'll see. About I think that. Europe gets the honor, but we'll see. Meanwhile, over here in North America, going to be a standard pick for CLG. Just a Sivir for the first pick for them. And enemy going to pick up Flair's favorite champion, the Hecarim. The champion he got to rank number one on the solo queue ladder by spamming. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's the champion you're going to spam to do it. Hecarim definitely one of the best ones for it. Rek'Sai does come through for Trashy as well, so so far no surprises in Champion Select. You talked about maybe unpredictability, but the champ like starts out with things you expect on both sides. Yep. Gragas banned, Rek'Sai picked up, no surprise there. Ah! Right. Bard locked in, the, sh the crowd goes wild. Nunu locked in for Smithy. Yeah. Very curious to see how he pulls this champion off. No skill shots to miss. Um, you can miss the ultimate still, I, I suppose. But uh, you're right; it's not really a skill shot. I'm, but I'm actually no. I really am curious to see how he pulls off Nunu because it is such a different style than we've seen from Smithy. Mm -hmm. He's been a guy who gets really focused on kills, uh, trying to get his lanes ahead, get an advantage by ganking. But yeah. Nunu is all about controlling the enemy jungler and the neutral objectives. So I'm really curious to see uh, CLG try and you know force this style and yeah, display control another style here in the North American LCS. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, kind of to think about it, as far as champ champion select is concerned, I really want to see CLG go for an Azir for Pobelter. I really don't like Nunu Sivir. I think it's one of the worst synergies you can go for. Uh, and so I think it needs to see someone else synergize. But meanwhile, enemy esports are going to pick up the Janna Vayne for their bottom lane. We see Vayne very commonly picked into Sivir for the mid-game match of the split push power. And Otter has been pretty successful on this champion. Yeah, he's been a huge fan of that champion, put in a lot of time on Vayne. And as you said, very happy to take it into the Sivir matchup. The other thing I really do like for CLG is that combo of the Bard and Nunu actually does uh, lend a lot more jungle control. Bard is so good at working uh, with the jungler, not only for ganks. Yeah, okay, you can gain a lot of distance with the Magical Journey ganks, uh, but just being able to control the vision. Bard is so quick and he's really hard to chase down. Uh, plus, they will be able to use Magical Journey for sneaky neutral objective steals. Unfortunately, CLG is on the blue, the blue team, so no back pit uh, Baron attempts. Maybe you can go for Dragon on those, but that's less crazy. Last two picks come through. It is going to be Azir for Poe Belter, and the top laner will be Nar. So also a decent Blood Boil target here. Zion Spartan will be set up to be a bully lane, and we almost always see Zion 
get early leads from CLG's first four minutes, and that could just allow him to completely stifle flares. Yeah, really uh, curious to see what Trashy can do, because while Nunu is going to focus on uh, jungle camps, Rek'Sai, very, very quick, level three, all pretty much all included gank package available. If you can just clear one side of the jungle and try to make an early move. If he can combo with flares on the Hecarim, try and get flares an early lead. We've seen how well flares can use a small lead to punish his opponent and even make cross map plays. He's, he, he's one to gank mid lane for Inox and you know, yeah. try and get the other solo laner ahead. Interesting. So the team going for a much longer range style. Zareth comes through. Flares will get to split push. The rest of the team more likely to kite back here and play the siege game. Counterlogic Gaming, though, have engaged through Nar Siver Bard. I don't know how well Poke will work here. I do I do like the locking of wave clear of some form though against Nunu. I feel like you have to have a mid a mid lane with strong wave clear. So uh, although you did point out the strength of Inox on the Assassins. Um, especially with the Azir matchup, I don't think they can afford to have him, you know, on some type of melee champion or uh, champion lacking wave player when they're facing a Nunu who's looking to take over the jungle. Uh, and they have Poe Belter in the mid lane who has been a really, really strong point for CLG to create plays off of. All right, so they decide to go for the Xerath. LeBlanc was open, Catherine was open, didn't want either of those. They didn't want to go for the, the Cog or Varus, the other yeah. kind of poke style, so. The Cog definitely, Inox has uh, had a lot of success on as well. Yeah, and, uh, he really took no bans at all from Counter-Logic Gaming. They banned the Echo to be afraid of the first pick, but Inox allowed to play whatever he wants. Handshake from the coaches, dressed similarly, interestingly enough, and I always think that's interesting. Uh, but meanwhile, yeah, it's going to be a very fun one. We'll see a couple new champions from all the players involved. But you guys at home, share your votes as the champions load into the rift. Tweet, hash uh, tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag CLG win or hashtag NME win. And let us know who you think is going to take this one. It's going to be a very fun battle. Counter Logic Gaming with a win can tie for first place or fall into a tie for second. NME Esports right now can either move up to a 3-3 tie with Impulse or drop down to Cloud9 spot. All right, we will see if uh, Team Liquid stand alone at the end of the day. As of right now, Afromu first out of the gates. Let's see if he can get that quick charm. Experience advantage. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. All right, now both teams heading towards the top side of the map. CLG have one very common level one where they just ward the entire entrance of the enemy jungle. It looks like they're going to keep doing that here. But they could have killed that ward. Psh. Lack of discipline on Zion and double lift. Already defensive wards for enemy esports. They will see this invade come in, but. Oh, double lift with the check. Wow, bad face check. Double lift nearly goes down. Otter can't get the kill, but gets stunned up by Bard. Otter trying to run, still gonna be first blood. Goes over to Bard, but still more damage for enemy esports. Can they knock these guys down? Belter running. Smithy, one hit from dead. Another double stun by Afram, who keeps him alive. And Inox, flash Q, fires back and takes down a Smithy. CLG still gets the lead for that one, though. Uh, double lift, next level, AD carry baits there to draw an Inox and get the double summoners out. So summoners evened up on the bottom duo. Uh, Inox was able to capitalize and grab one kill back for enemy, but CLG do get that first blood bonus. Uh, the other thing I was going to point out before the invade is that Smithy has also gone utility. Uh, looks like fairly deep utility because he's got 387 move speed as well. Um, on the Nunu, so he's got not only the extra survivability of Biscuits to stay out there, but the move speed to really get around the jungle and harass. That com uh, combined with Bard's mobility should provide a lot of uh, control for CLG. As of right now, going to start off on the Gromp and duo swapped top. Remember, the flashes and heals for both AD carries will be down, so they'll probably be more cautious Maybe they just wanted to lane swap uh, out of the Vayne matchup because without summoners, that would be even more painful. Yeah, that's true. It's unfortunate the level one, uh, if either body drop or flares had ignited, double lift would have died. Yep. The half point heal and the ignite damage would have been enough. Unfortunate here, enemy esports start out with uh, a wash for the early game. Trashy gonna get invaded on by Smithy. Smithy will have consume, and Trashy realizes he's not gonna have a chance here. 
CLG invading on the strong side of the map, and they deserve control of this jungle. Yeah, Trashy trying to sneak away a couple of small camps before they were chased out of the strong side. But he gets run off, uh, and actually that time, whether it was Nunu or a different champion, he would have had to respect the invade regardless. Well, it seems here. like going to take it. Oh, actually, the red buff grabbed it. Yeah, so I think that Burn, meant to it. go to Flares, but went to Trashy instead. Yeah, they want to keep that helicopter spinning for the maximum DPS. You can take Dragon really easily if you have a blue buff Hecarim, even low level. But he won't get it, and they'll shove bottom, try and answer the push. Both teams with the early push. Janna Shield is going to help out. Oh. Yeah, so... I don't know if he can get this. He's, I guess he'll smite it. He's got, well, he's got smite, and uh, Rek'Sai can also burrow again for some extra heal. Still close. But, man, I'm really, really... Personal pain point uh, as far as the changes to the leashing in, in jungle camps. A lot of changes meant to reduce cases where range champions were abusing leashing cases have actually affected a lot of melee champions as well. And the extra target swap there, not calculated from Trash. He got a little bit too far out of range, and the full reset costs him some health, so he'll have to back after the red buff. Yeah, we end of the day, though, with the bot lane turret going to be knocked down on the next wave. CLG are going to stay with the freeze top lane as well. So despite the fact that they killed the turret away for early, we're going to have a very samey game right here. Nice attempt at the mid lane roam by Aphromu will not turn into a kill, though. Roughly equal jungle farm and top lane farm. And Otter will, in fact, build a freeze. We still have a 400 gold lead for Counter Logic Gaming, though. Of course, Afro, be glad to hit turrets is worth a lot more gold than body drops coin income. Definitely true. Spell Thieves. You can steal from turrets, in fact. Here comes Smithy. Uh, remember, no summoner spells. Doesn't matter, because he's got Tumble. Yeah, Ice Blast doesn't mean too terribly much right now, but once Vayne starts auto-attacking, the slows are going to mean a lot for her team fight power. Trashy gets level 4. He is jungling a bit faster than Smithy now, after the lane swap has happened. And as lanes swap back, Flares has a wave that will eventually freeze into him, I think. Well, he's starting to shove it here. Yeah, Looks okay. Like he put a few extra auto attacks. Ooh, Trashy just barely got seen. That trinket just spotted the entrance, but Doublelift does not have flash, and he does not get the spell shield out in time. He has nowhere to go. What? Trashy pops the E with spell shield still on, and Zion Spartan TPs in to chase down, but maybe this is a bit too much for him. Bard showing up as well. Aphromu, flash stun, somehow gets them both. The ignite on the flares means a kill for Doublelift, and Trashy is super screwed. <laughs> He's definitely cornered right now. Four members. Oh, he wants a piece of double lift, but nice spacing there from double lift. <laughs> and he's able to keep it just out of the grasp of wow. Trashy. So there were a couple of very, very small uh, changes that could have uh, completely reversed the story up there. Uh, the, the Hecarim knockback looked like players didn't quite get it positioned correctly, and double lift was not knocked away from the turret. Didn't get quite on the other side of him. Wanted to get it just in time. But then as well, I don't think the Trashy E, even doing true damage, would have uh, been able to get the kill for them on double lift. But no chance because it was spell shielded. Definitely uh, small areas for improvement on both yeah. sides. But in the end... CLG comes out with the advantage because of Aphromu and the flash bard play. And he's still going for the big play. He's going to be right behind Otter, who can't possibly get away from this one. BF Sword Sivir does ridiculous damage. Otter forced a flash basically the second it came back from cooldown. And Aphro doing really good things. He's already pink worded that river too, so like repeat ganks for Smithy are super easy. <laughs> yeah, he's so solo ganking as the support. Don't even need the jungler at your back as bard. That's why it's banned so often against Aphromu. Afro Finally get to see him. Uh, it's after seven it minutes, again. too. It's going to be a lot of damage in this turret. BF Sword Sivir. Spell Thief's Edge Aphromu, and it's doing a fair bit here. Vayne, thankfully, did at least get her Cutlass Recall plus Boots. So as far as worth of inventory, these AD carries are basically the same. But Doublelift did get the cash in earlier, of course. We'll see how round two goes between these guys. Double if missing heal, let's, Otter missing flash. Let's see if Erexi can get a good tunnel maximum distance. 
Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, that's how it's going to work. Close enough to the wall to pop out, but he got hit into a wall, basically, before he left the Magical Journey. Guess it registers. He was on, still inside when it hit him, so. On the wall, yeah. Yeah. He was barely inside, so he got pushed forward into a cliff face. If only hit a little bit earlier, it could have actually canceled the Magical Journey. If only been, if only Otter had uh, tumbled and followed in, in through the Magical Journey. <laughs> Maybe he would pick that up. Maybe, yeah, big risk, but it's going to be enough with them zoning out the Bard for the Dragon to go through to enemy esports. The immediate two-on-two -two worked quite nicely. Body drop, though, without Sight Stone, after we having two kills, means he's got that done early in this game, so there will be a ward difference for the first couple of minutes. Similarly, Smithy rushing Sight Stone himself before even upgrading his machete, so... An early emphasis on wards will be here for Counter Logic Gaming. Yeah, look at that red side just lit up by Smithy. Let's see if he returns over there. Wow, that top jungle is. Poe Belter, yeah, exactly, the red crazy. side jungle. Uh, Poe Belter has done a really good job in the mid lane. He's got control and the CS lead over Inox. Uh, he'll probably have to stop off and get that blue buff, but once you transfer blue buff, Nunu is definitely set up to. Invade. Zion's getting a huge chunk here out oh, of Flair. Man. Yeah, good luck, oh, Flair's gonna be from this one. Level six to level five. Ignite is on. No, thank you. Trashy shows up to not get the flash on Burrow, but Inox is here to knock down Zion Spartan. The flashless Nar has nowhere to go. Can't dodge much of it. Inox gets the kill. Enemy keeps firing back. Yep, Poe Belter not able to answer that roam. He had just recalled, and Inox able to move top to answer the kill. Zion dodged as much as he could, but yep. very good roam from Inox. Able to reap the rewards there. Yeah. You're seeing the cost of the roams, though. Pavolta getting farther and farther ahead, and Minions flares TPing for the bottom lane, though. Does not dodge the Q from Aphrom. He kind of just turns around in a corner. That is huge. Hecarim's first home guard teleport is a big part of the way you can snowball that lane. And that's going to be a non-factor here. Huge cooldown for it used on a ward. He's still not level 6. Nothing for flares to do except jungle now. And this is not the smite TP Hecarim. So yeah. he is in pain. Ooh, Bartle to a miss. The Volta still comes through. The flash from Afro gets the stun. Janel to turn it back around. It looks like in the battle of cooldowns, enemy comes out slightly ahead here, not having to burn a flash for that. Yeah. Dragon already down means bot lane is not really going to be much pressure. However, Zion Spartan is slinking his way into this bottom lane. It's actually Smithy who's shoving top. And Nars waiting for something to happen down here. That new new lane shove. That's a good use of the ultimate, <laughs> actually. All right, let's see if they can actually get this turret because Trashy's in the area. And Janna, a bit low on mana, but able to get one shield up on the turret. Still some damage coming through. Enemy cannot engage on double with this many minions around. It's going to be enough. The investment of Zion Spartan is super worth it. And they push enemy out of their own turret, plus knocking it down. Smithy gets his sight stone and the pink ward after that top lane shove. So he will be able to replenish the vision inside the enemy jungle. Extra turret going down for CLG is huge as well. They have a lot of wave control with the Sivir and Azir. Two members they can... Uh, swap between lanes to get them shoved. With uh, flares really hurting right now uh, for combat stats, it should be fairly easy for CLG to manipulate side waves and uh, pressure that mid turret, get the last outer down. Well, the problem for them actually is this entire thing got equalized in the last 20 seconds because Zion spent so much time down there, it actually gave flares time to get his farm back up. The actual gold game between the two is oh. quite close. It's, with, it's less than 100 gold apart. XP is the same as well. And the bot lane turret allowed Flares to catch up the matchup. Now, the dual lane, of course, is going quite nice for CLG. You're right. The uh, All that lane farm taken by Smithy uh, was recouped by Flares once he get back up there with his home guards. It does mean that Smithy's 1,000 gold over his opponent. So, I mean, it, it obviously went somewhere nice, but... Yeah, as we mentioned, the Sightstone and Pink Ward for him. But, yeah, yeah, they actually haven't done much with the Deep Vision. While Smithy's been able to get it down, he hasn't been able to really capitalize on the Vision. It's one thing to get the wards down. It's another thing to actually make a play around the information that those wards are giving you. Yeah, all they really did was realize that Trashy was not top jungle when they went to push the bot lane turret down. They said, okay, respect the Rek'Sai. She's going to be somewhere nearby. And, and they didn't really play it any differently, so... Yeah, sure. <laughs> 
if you fight bot lane, it's kind of the best you can do. See, Both here's these gonna can. be a fight, though. Double lift tries, TP in from Nar, who does not have a rage bar, immediate stun, and a lot of damage coming through. Zion's part oh. is gonna lose his life for the hubris, and Smith is in the wrong spot as well. Flashes the wall, no follow-up available. CLG, do not get the dive. Whew. These condemns uh, from Otter. Yeah. Snagging on a little nooks and crannies of Summoner's Rift. Zion gets annihilated in mini form. And if esports within 2,000 gold of this game, really not too bad. CLG is, of course, winning. They are playing it a bit better overall, but the matchup's still quite close. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what enemy can do uh, with Otter with a completed Blade of the Rune King. Can they get him to the point where he can, you know, outmatch the Gnar as well in the split push game? Because. Uh, Sivir, or uh, Bane. Ooh. Oh, Belter looked for the LCS big play, but he's kind of alone doing that. Otter's right here. Flashes up, but the flash follow will get him the kill. Now Zion's in the mix. They've got to be careful. The slow lands, meaning Afro's now in range. Ice Blast hits as well, and oh. Otter, ooh. Thankfully, minions take the stun. All right, well, side lane, don't care about that. Otter runs straight down mid, and he's able to make a play on Poe Belter. Mechanical misplay, honestly. Belter missed a lot of his skills on the engage towards Inox. The rest of the team not around. CLG for the second time in a row now. Look to take a fight without the information despite their double sight stone. And have yet to make the right choice now. Letting enemy pick up two kills in a row, bring the game back within 2,000. And now with Belter in the fountain as his double lift. Enemy go for dragon number two. Zion oh. will stop flares though. He does not have a mallet completed yet. Dragon will go down, yeah, so he's not going to be able to chase down the Hecarim without a Frozen Mallet in his build. He's and going that, for the... Uh, yeah, it should be belt. the uh, um, Black Cleaver, but without going for that um, Mallet build, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think their CLG are going to even try and answer the split push game. So yeah. we'll see CLG grouping up, trying to make use of the team fight and forcing with Meganar rather than even trying to play around with the Vayne or Hecarim split push. Instead, they go for the mid lane. They're getting a lot of damage through with Double Lift and Poe Belter. The Janna Shield and the Xerath Wave, they're not enough. Just the force on it, and CLG gets the turret down. But they're at half health. Flares is here. He oh finds Poe Belter. Another kill picked up. Nice Bard ult. He stops the two frontliners. Enemy get one, but they lose the turret. I mean, they have to use Bard ult and Sivir ult just to escape. So that means their presence is greatly reduced in the mid lane as well. Enemy able to get the kills as well as spread out. Now they're going to get an extra lane of income. Flares again sent down bottom. He's going to get a lot of money off of that minion wave. And they've got all the leftover vision from their dragon play. So he's completely safe. And so the wards still pretty okay. CLG looking still in the lead. Yeah. See if this 1-3-1 uh, from enemy actually turns out for them. Because Vayne, as well, soaking a bunch of gold on the top side. And then, of course, as we mentioned from Champion Select, the uh, Xerath going to bring that wave clear that they want for mid lane to hold. Mm -hmm. See if they can force CLG into a position where CLG are the ones to make the choice. And it's up to enemy to capitalize on it. They do have Rek'Sai to answer a global move. And so far, the mid game calls from CLG have backfired. And enemy are you know, slowly Climbing back into the game, yeah. closing that gold gap. 2,400, definitely not the biggest lead. Less than 10% gold advantage doesn't mean too much. Double out of mana alone in the bot lane, now has Aphra to help him out. Flare's just playing give up farm you can in the bad lane. This turret's already dead, not much gonna happen here. It's gonna be hard for CLG to push forward. They're gonna try with Nunu coming up and warding, and no one's gonna defend a possible push. Well, the map is mirrored right now. Both teams committing pretty much the same resources to opposite sides. Top laner's gonna try and hold on uh, to turrets here. Enemy uh, are working at the outer turret, so a bit more difficult. And they have a mid laner oh, with a, a semi-global to help out with the wave clear. So enemy yeah. gonna get the first turret down, but it is the, uh, the outer turret. Yeah, that was the risk, is, you know, CLG was going to get a better turret here. The ulti used by Xerath makes it a one for zero, but round two could still happen. Well, Jan has also been sent back 
by enemy to help protect. And Zion once again! Speaking of being sent back, Zion Spartan sent back to the Fountain. Otter on a killing spree. 3-1-2. and two. He gets Vayne again. He's having a similar performance his first game. Question answered. Will Vayne be able to take down this Nar in the side lane split push? Yes, she will. Smithy can't do much by himself. Except Ward. Blood boil in his ear. All right, Pobalt gets his blue buff back, though it's it, in face of a ward. Enemy gets the timer. CLG really need a group to try and force something here. Uh, they yeah. gain so much by grouping their champions. The synergy, uh, they gain a lot of power. Not only is it the blood boil, but also the zone control. This team is all about zone control. Nunu in his ear with uh, Nar to try and get them set up. They really want to have a five on five set battle lines. Whereas uh, enemy are going to keep on pressuring their side lanes. Yeah. The split push working out very well for them, and they get closer and closer. And and you mentioned the fact they needed a mid laner with wave clear. I'm like, oh, assassin, that's what Inox is good at. But Zareth not only wave clear his lane, but someone else's lane in <laughs> yeah. case they get out rotated. I mean, it actually has panned out quite nicely. I have actually not seen that before. Usually it's just the zigs that comes to mind when you yeah. think of multi lane wave clear. Maybe but... Azir to help. Or, uh, Ezreal to help sometimes, but you're right. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, but you're right. Very few of them. Very few of them. The Zareth, though, has paid off. One of the only Zareths I've seen all split long in North America. I don't believe I've seen another one here in this oh, region. Here's OG split. going for a play. Flash required by Inox. They Double have, ulti burned. They have grouped up, but good flash there. Because if that bard ult lands, there goes your wave clear. Yeah, exactly. And a bunch of gold in the pockets of Counterlogic Gaming. Wouldn't be a good thing for enemy esports. So now, a 1500 gold game. As you mentioned, the gold lead being clawed back. How about a flank from CLG, though? And Flair's trying to run as fast as he can. Yeah, these are those bard movements we talked about. Cross map, really easy for him. Jumping over the wall, and Flair's has to ult out. He almost set up a stun. He was right in front of the turret. Didn't seem to matter, though. But enemy esports get to push the mid lane because of this. The wave, not in a good spot either. So CLG, they look for a kill that they can't even get, and another turret goes to enemy esports. CLG getting pulled apart by one of the newest teams in the LCS. Very, very impressive stuff here from enemy. Let's see if uh, Otter can keep it up on the bottom side. Their war coverage not amazing in the red buff side jungle, but he does have Trashy here to steal the red buff and help with the exit. Uh-oh, be careful, Otter. Poe Belcher's here, flash force. That is the second flash lost by enemy esports in the last minute, though. Next time around, someone's gonna die. Flashes on both the main carries for enemy down. Uh, Flares had to burn his ultimate as well. These are things that will come back up with time. If enemy decide to now play more defensively and wait, they can retain the advantages that they yeah. got by paying for them with those flashes. Yeah. CLG, though, going to try and pressure that window. And CLG can definitely pressure that window, especially with Flare's ulti being down. The Hecarim, though, has just finished Trinity Force. But he's ulti this. He's got teleport. But do you want to fight without any mobility spells on this dragon? CLG muscle their way in. They get the first dragon of the game. And they don't take much damage for it. Flair's fighting Zion Spartan, but I don't know if he's going to win this one. 11 to 10, Zion's Meganar. He lands a lot of damage, and Flair's is not going to be able to fight back. The lack of ulti means he loses the battle. Zion wins 1v1. That was just a poor choice from Flair's. You, do, you see the Narbar charging up. You cannot fight him by a wall. You're in the top lane. There's plenty of open space. He could move back out towards the middle of the lane. Yeah. Uh, spamming his Q as he does so but not able to do so. And Zion gets the outplay up top. Able to capitalize. And puts the game back into a 1,000 gold lead for CLG, and plus that dragon being, being picked up. 30 minutes or 20 minutes in like this. Actually, those stats start to matter, so a really important neutral objective pickup here worth its weight in gold. Nice flash, ulti by Bard. <laughs> have to set this fight up. TP is coming in, but will it be enough? Because the ulti from Bard buying a lot of time. Trashy being focused. Double lifts low. In comes the pony. Knocks down the AD carry. Smithy forced to run. Flares joining Afro on a magical journey. Gets stunned for his troubles. And it's the one for one off the flash ulti. Now Belter to buy a lot of time for his team. No further engage going to happen. Yeah, a little bit early from body drop, but he Ooh. did save turret damage as well. The turret did not go down. And they got the inside track on mid lane. The prior Azir turret keeps the wave up like this, and CLG can push right on in. They got a lot of time to knock this down. Missing an AD carry or not, this is a nearly dead turret. Blood anyway, Boy Azir not able to make it happen. 
CLG able to stay safe under that, but Flare still wants blood. He looks for Belter, but not enough damage comes through. As your turret goes down, but CLG get the better of it. Whew. Nice close game we have here. Let's see if I can match up, but once again, the uh, flashes soon to come off cooldown for the enemy carries. Inox will be first, of course. As of right now, just going to try and uh, grab the side lane farm. Both AD carries shoot out to the side lanes to try and collect it. Double lift right now. Uh, does have the crit multiplier for his Infinity Edge, so feeling much better about his damage scaling. Vayne, though, full attack speed build because mm -hmm. she has so much flat attack damage from her ultimate. And the Janna. And, uh, I mean, it's a really nice build for this. Ooh. It's, it's standard anyway to go Ruin King Phantom Dancer, but there is some extra synergy on the build. I do really like attack damage buffs, or just on hit buffs in general. Nami's great for her too. Otter is definitely set up to be the hard carry of team fights. The question is, are you going to be able to survive a Gnar in your face? I think right now he is perfectly equipped to kill Gnar. Because Gnar has very little actual resistance right now. He's all health. He's going to have... Uh, well, he's got true damage anyways, but he's got the uh, yeah. attack speed for his Blade of the Ruin King. So you get true damage and you get percentage health damage. You get Great. everything you need to take down the Snar very easily. All right, so then Eyes on Otter as one of the primary carries. Two-item double lift, two-item Pobelter out there with Blood Boil. Certainly there's damage forces for the other carry lanes as well. You're right, the top laners may be easily killed here. So we got to see where the big carries go. Afro. Clears Baron, no wards there. Most telling thing right now is that the team with Nunu uh, really behind on vision control. Aframu and Smithy trying to fight uh, that fight and get some territory back in their control. The pink wards are still left standing for them. And they've been able to get some work their way up towards the red buff area, which is the yeah. most important area. You know, Baron buff. Baron on that side of the map. Yeah, you mentioned the, the lack of wards, but all of enemies' wards are mostly south jungle, which just doesn't matter with Dragon already off the table for the next three minutes. And the number of useful wards is limited to defensively in their top jungle. I'm not sure if enemies' vision is going to be enough for them to make any good plays. Zion and Flare's in a battle. Flare still feels happy to fight. Minion are about to trigger, which could give another window for him to go in. CLG happy to keep playing the Siege game of Azir and Sivir. Only Xerath is the wave clear, and Inox was top lane a second ago. They have Inox top and Otter mid instead. It feels like a bit of a miss, missed opportunity there. Yeah. Allocating the Vayne to mid. Yeah, I agree, I agree. With mid lane being the obvious Siege target here. It's not where your wave clear wants to be. Ulti pop by Xerath to buy some time. Ward fights coming back and forth. Trashy is going to trade one away. Dragon back up at a minute 15, so CLG spent some time warding top lane. Baron ended up not being a factor just yet. But the oh, ult's gonna a hit Inox. Not a good thing. Body drop gonna sacrifice himself to put the ulti to buy some time. He will die for it, but the carry stays alive. New Azir turret means no counter engage for enemy esports. See if CLG can actually push in. Without the constant Janna shields, it will help. Uh, but they still do have Ludens Echo Xerath. See if it's enough. Azir, blood boiled, with Sivir. Yeah, and Xerath out of mana. That's enough. All <laughs> right, counter logic gaming. The holding pattern is working. Nearly a 3,000 gold lead now. They had previously set up Baron, and even though Dragon's up soon, they're going to rush right for this. They did not let enemy get any wards back up on this area of the map. Zion's even got uh, Meganar right now in case something did happen. Yeah, this is a completely free Baron. They've even got the Wolf Spirit to let them know where the Rek'Sai ultimate went, so there's no possibility of a steal from enemy. Wow, nicely done. And Body Drop, he just respawned. Really goes down for it again, but enemy wants to fight anyway. In they go, Flares like a lot of damage. Smithy in the front lines, Flares goes down to Pobelter. The engage means nothing, and now they go right back in, but they trade back. Belter is down, killed off by Trashy. Here's the chase, Smithy stunned against the wall. Otter's on a rampage, 4v3 despite the Baron buff. Well, they will be able to pick up Dragon, so it'll be number three and give them move speed, which is very important for the split pushing comp. However, CLG with the Baron buff still up on three members, and that siege is very, very scary. 
So mid lane tier two could go down, putting the gold back a little bit closer. Counter Logic Gaming, a great Baron from them, but enemy esports a great reaction afterwards. Mid lane goes down. Banner of Command even up in the mid lane from Aphromu. He's a but, big fan of that item. Yeah. Been but rushing it. Six seconds on the respawn for the jungler mid laner means there's no contest for this dragon. Flares goes top lane. He's got teleport, so it's a safe place to be. Afro, don't know if he's going to get much for this one. Oh, attempted steal not going to happen. Good smite by Trashy. Yep, so they get not only the dragon, but also the extra turret for themselves. Let's take another look at this engage here. Flares going in, and Inox immediately looking for the backline damage uh, before uh, attempting to join the rest of the team. As you said, both top laners, pretty easy targets. Pull about right into the stun. That was a stun from Inox. Yeah, he was trying to ult the team in. Trashy actually tanked the the Emperor's E. Otter actually respected Pobelter's uh, attempted Azir ultimate by flashing. It ended up being a wasted flash only because Inox with the instant stun there. So uh, it was a good thought, mm -hmm. good reaction, but Inox surprised everybody. And Otter gets his third item, as does Doublelift in the aftermath of that team fight. Mid laner's still almost there. The AD carries are now the strongest forces for both teams as far as item break points go. Group up again, Blood Boil. You can try and get it onto both Silver and Azir for a second. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of cooldown reduction. The Frozen Heart already done for Smithy, yeah. Baron Siege, three people still have this buff, which means it's going to be pretty successful overall. Auto getting pushed around. The wave fear of Zareth, not enough. Turret gets dropped. CLG on the counterattack. And a big ulti. It's trashy and body dropped. Oh, oh, the stun lands. Not good for enemy esports. CLG pushing in farther. And they've got the Baron. Oh, oh man. They even caught flares. Down he goes. Over aggression from enemy esports. Cleanly punished by CLG. Uh, Aphromu and his banner of command rush. Really pays off when they are able to get those mid-game Barons. And man, the Bard plays as well. The long-range initiation over and over from Aphromoo. Yep. Burning summoners or actually catching priority targets from him. Teams may be going back to banning that. Yeah, it's been really good. Even though he's fished for a lot of them, sometimes it misses, sometimes it burns a flash, sometimes it wins your team the fight entirely. You don't have to bat 100 to be a good Bard player, but he's landed, bat 1,000 rather. As of right now, 97 second cooldown, so keep on throwing out the Hail Mary. Oh, nice. He's going for the build he was going to yesterday. Raptor's Cloak got picked up. <laughs> Let's see if extra Bard pushing power with the Zizorot. All right, there's the catch, though, that we just saw. Uh, tempered Fate into the stun. Ah, oh, this is where Flares came from. He was looking for the flank, but oh, oh Belter. He went on to E into ult, and Belter caught him right away. I'm surprised he went at all with Body Drop already dead. It felt like a wasted teleport, but still a great reaction by CLG. Belter landing the ulti. Double is still scaling up. 291 CS on this Sivir. Done a great job finding his farm throughout the game. 5,000 gold lead. Baron's off the map, but CLG far enough ahead that sieging is still going to be good for them. It's... It's so strong just because they out-siege enemy and they've got this potential for these turret dives. You, if you're Bard Ultimate, you don't use it just to snag somebody. You can use it on the turret as well and walk straight past. So Aphromu just provides another whole way to use uh, a sieging comp like this. Mm -hmm. Another dynamic to this style of play. And Aphromu now runs fast near turrets, thanks to the Raptor Cloak. Yeah, they it's actually buffed that item place. a while ago. It's yeah. extremely efficient just in the combat stats that it gives, plus all the movement speed. Yeah, he can traverse the map very quickly. Armor and health regen for 1,000 gold. 30% movement speed while near turrets of any team, alive or dead. Combine that with some bonus magic resist to make his rot portal. Right now, CLG pops. CLG, they are afraid of getting jumped on. Out goes Doublet and Aphromu. Dragon and Baron both up in about a minute and a half. It would be number four for enemy esports, but the Baron might be all CLG needs to win the game. So enemy can't faithfully go for Dragon without possibly giving that objective up. Now, I feel like the crab 
Scuttle Crab is going to be important fairly soon here. Poe Belter is going to solo it himself. Take on the crab. Victory for CLG. Victory for Sharima. <laughs> oh, he also has his Zonias completed. So he is going to look for another uh, deep Azir play. I like it because it got both summoner spells available and the stasis active ready. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hard for the backline dive to work for enemy esports. And with how much pressure Azir puts out, it's always difficult to navigate as Vayne. Flair's oh, man, yeah. a bit behind, just doesn't have that much money. He's 2-5. and five. He's actually got less gold than the enemy jungler. Under 10,000 gold on Flares means he's just not very durable. Not much magic resist either means he can easily get killed by Poe Belter. And the fact that it's only really a tank and a half combined in the enemy lineup means sitting in the back and doing damage to Poe Belter and Double Lift is going to work very well for CLG. Enemy also, there's so much pressure on them uh, with the two neutral objectives coming up at the same time. It's so hard for them to get their split push going again. Uh, once you lose control of that mid-game map pressure, it's really hard to reset something as spread out as a 1-3-1. Right now, they really have to respect the true site around Baron. And CLG are going to do their best to reclaim this area of the map. They respect body drop with tornadoes. Trashy lurks back and forth, but he's just on top of a network of wards here. Everyone takes some damage, doesn't care too much though. He's got armor and health regen. So enemy can opt to send one person down to Dragon to try and take it. They've opted for Otter. Maybe he makes a solo play on Zion Spartan here. He just turned mini form. Will not be the case. They don't have much vision to back it up. Well, they've Zipper got flares the down there. One up by Baron right now. Okay, they're going to try with two. CLG still in the mid lane. They could roam down, but looks like they will not come down in time. Dragon will go to enemy esports. CLG so starts Baron, Baron, but enemy knows about this. It's dying so fast, though. So double if then Poe Belter plus X Smithy crushing the health bar. Zion on the wrong side of the fight, but it will be Baron picked up first. Anything gonna happen for enemy? They cannot chase this journey. Trashy knocked back <laughs> over the wall, but that's all Emperor Divide does. They're gonna catch X Smithy with another condemn. They're almost gonna get the kill, but Tempered Fate is gonna be massive. Body Trap has to try to save the team, but he gets chucked out. Afro dies at the two for one, but Zion Spartan crushes the backline. What one a versus three now? Blank from Zion to come and cut off the exit. Very, very well played there from CLG. Trade the higher priority objective and able to turn around the team fight. Zion's not done. Nope, he's on the hunt. He's got a red buff from his previous kills. Mm, hide and go seek. All right, Flair's hide and go seek champion 2015, but it's a two versus three. Counterlogic Gaming has Baron buff and all the big carries up right now to push down the base. Flair's is here. He doesn't want to fight. He does, but after the turret dies, that's too late. He's going to die for his hubris. Inhibitor will go down as well. I feel like he's given up at that point. If we're going to do ride to your death, it's, at least it's going to be two inhibitors down here. CLG going to... Now the response came in. Anux is already back, so... Ooh, Nunu and Bard actually not going to make their way up. Oh, oh man! Oh! Whoa, that was amazing. He predicted it. Oh, Inox, man. All right, just kidding. One inhibitor down for CLG, as well as their mid laner. So they got 40 seconds of 5v4 to potentially make some big plays and get the map back under control, get the wards back under control, because Dragon 5 is next for enemy esports. True. Gold lead or not. But the wards they put up now are going to be gone by the time that Dragon pops. Yeah, maybe the case, but if they can set up the control. So this is a nice knockback to buy some time. All right, CLG. so also watch Zion trailing this entire time through the river. Even though Hecram Home Guard teleports in, uh, the Banshee's Veil, Zion's able to walk right past him and get in towards all the high priority targets. Aphromoo, of course, with the Tempered Fate, was able to uh, stall the rest of the team and buy time for Zion to get there. Even though Smithy ends up going down, that's Nunu, that's the guy on your team that you hope gets caught and you hope they burn everything on. You know what's unfortunate, actually, is the fact that Flair's even fought Zion made him reach Meganar. Yeah. Because of the fact he's walking across the map, the Rage Bar basically depleted, but Hecarim does damage so frequently, it gave him a ton. 
of like you can see like how long it would take Zion to generate that normally. Well, oh, uh, exposed inhibitor. That's a very clear path here for mm -hmm. CLG. They're gonna try and group up. Uh, they're not even gonna clear that extra wave in the mid lane. They can just wait for the supers to do it. Barned up, bannered up, minion. Uh, so it's actually Ohm Wrecker, by the way, picked up here for Aphromoo. Ah. It was not Surat Portal. So it's not that trolley. They're actually looking for more stasis. There's only two, ta three towers. Is that double nexus up? Yeah. Okay. So they've got three towers left, left on the field that you can use Ohm Wrecker on. And he still opted for that over the portal. All right, well, uh, for move bringing in the Ohm Wrecker here, maybe we have 100% win rate for the item in the North American LCS. Maybe 0%. We'll have to see who wins this game. <laughs> CLG again, challenging for first oh. place with a win right here. Enemy Esports looking to tie up at 3-3 three and three and get into 6 if they can take it down here. So the big chunk that comes out that draws the gasp is the Ludens Echo proc charge, which is the first one. Mm -hmm. So especially since they can't move, uh, the consecutive ones won't be able to finish off Poe Belter even if they did land. Yeah. 202 bonus damage from a Luton's hit. Pretty big. Would say so. All right, Dragon's in two minutes and Trashy is able to get a pink cord down and the Scuttler. It's an early Scuttler, but maybe it allows him to maintain the rest of the ward control. Otter is the one solo farming the mid lane. I like this actually. He's also going for Infinity Edge last. I hope that's not Zephyr. Um, with the Phantom Dancer, to, or sorry, the Banshee's able to keep himself alive from Poe Belter, so. Otter definitely well set up here. Four, two, and six. Highest kill participation on the team. Afro, though, nice job getting a bunch of wards down in preparation for the dragon. On the route in from enemy, he feels safe seeing the rest of the squad clearing waves. A number of great wards come in from the CLG support. Yeah, and I have to say, just look for another play from Afro Moo. Tempered Fate earning them a lot of advantages here. Without the defenses to hide behind, you know, flashless Zareth, flashless Bane, they have to be very, very careful. Even when Afro moves, not even on the screen. Yep. It's a long, long range spell. Mid lane turret comes up again for CLG. That wave is going to be pressured for, I think, the entire time until Dragon respawns. Unless enemy are able to fire back, but they gotta be careful battling in front of a turret. It's down to half, a bit of wave clear back and forth, but CLG still able to hold this part of the map. And that gives free roam, yeah, as they dodge the Xerath ult, it gives free roam to make sure Smithy and Aphromu can maintain ward control over Dragon. It's up in 16 seconds. It would be Dragon 5 for enemy esports. They're able to knock down the Azir turret, but CLG still with the inside track, and a monstrous ulti that just barely misses, but that could have been the team fight for CLG. Got that melee minion, though. Ooh, a lot of poke, though, might mean CLG can't do much more, but... Mm, I think it's it's only on to Smithy here, and they really don't care, don't care about that, so... You're right. Enemy want to file in, but this is going to go down so incredibly quick, but maybe it means the team fight. Enemy Esports push in mid first. Players CLG just able looking to walk for away it. Yeah. Not found, so CLG well played. They sieged mid, and then they retreated and picked up Dragon number two for them. Mid and Hib respawns, but CLG sitting pretty. 9,000 gold up, and the team with better wards overall means they can maybe even go for the Baron soon. They really do have a pretty easy path towards two exposed inhibitors as well. See if they actually opt for a, a vision play and you know try and set up that fog of war advantage around Baron to draw enemy out, uh, or they just decide to march up the uh, up the mid lane because exposed inhibitors with the uh, you know amount of zone control that CLG have, you can even use enemies' own walls against them to get them to try and funnel into uh, that opening. That's true, and a funnel could be a great place for almost anyone. I mean, both of these teams have a wall stun. CLG kind of has two with the Bard Q. Both these teams have these sort of line-focused mid laners where tight corridors really help you deal damage. CLG on spawn, going for Baron number three. Enemy are around. Flares has teleport, but there's not... Okay, there are a couple of good wards now for this one. Body drop trying to buy time. Where's the engage going to be? Zion Spartan is Meganar already. Otter lands a stun. No stun from Bard, though, and the engage continues, but they will knock out Body Drop. Afro gets chunked a lot. 
comes through from Zareth and out goes CLG, but it's a 5v4. Zareth ultimate available and pullback there's low. Who he jukes, I think, every single one of them, and CLG still maintain control and enough health to keep fighting. All right, so Janet down, four versus five. Now they make the move towards the explosive inhibitor. Side lanes are pushing. Call to retreat and try and use the new new combo to secure this Baron. Enemy's plan is to steal it. Let's see if there's a... No, they have plenty of vision. Oh, Zion Spartan has a Guardian Angel, but gets hit up. Otto's got to be careful. He loses the Banshee's Veil. Clears with a mid lane that got promoted, but doesn't mean much. Janna's up in 15 seconds. CLG, extra man on the field. Their window is closing. And their health bars are they, so low. They took the more risky route of trying to pull the Baron play rather than working with the side waves and exposed inhibitors. Janna back up. Zareth actually in base. That should be uh, the signal for them to go. It's going to be difficult. A low health on CLG, but no Zareth at all for enemy esports. Baron already dead. And now is a 5v5 with a Baron buff. Enemy Esports running, running as fast as they can. Another Tempered Fate dodge, but they've still got to be a bit careful. Here's the, the front now. line. Here's the engage. Here's the jive in from Flares, and they don't quite get Paul Belter. Trashy in. He looks for Smithy. A shutdown as Doublelift goes down. Trashy still on the chase. Wants to get another one. Zion Spartan buying time. Inox misses the flash Q. Zion low, and Flares on the chase. The magical oh! journey keeping Afro alive for now. And the E has timed out. The double stun keeps Afro safe. It's a 5v4. Trashy cannot <laughs> land the knockup. He gets stunned again. Afro lives to fight another day. But mid lane's getting pushed. Enemy esports pushing onto the Flares floor. Is Flares is recalling. But, oh, Flares is going to answer. Flares has home guard. They got the inhibitor already, though, due to the minions. And enemy are still pushing, though. They have the numbers advantage here. Zion Spartan could not possibly cleanly jump in. Body drop trying to stay alive. Smith does not have the damage, nor does Bard. Oh, the what is to you from the Zareth. And they will back away as Zion was, in fact, <laughs> able to recall. Top inhib went down. CLG still in the lead. <laughs> Freak. You need to take a break? <laughs> I want another fight. That was fun. Get some water. Get some water. You earned it. Man. All right. So also we saw there in the middle of that fight the power of the bard kite through the jungle. Yeah. It even makes people second guess chasing him. Through the second magical journey there with enough cooldown reduction, it is ridiculously hard. All right. But initially here, again, CLG, they went for the more risky play with the Baron, and enemy were able to keep them there for long enough. Flash in from Trashy for the double knockup. Otter chases down double lift, so they have the kill pressure now. It's just about cornering one of the low health targets. And this is where CLG do a great job spreading. They're able, Smithy's able to juke that one, and Afro move plays the distraction. They don't chase the Nunu or the Nar up through the river. Up for Afro, and he makes them pay for it, wasting the time of both their tanks. They did get that turret down in the mid lane, but again, Baron buff still up on several members of CLG. They return to the siege. Yep, and another banner in the mid lane that cannot be cleared away by Zareth, the inhibitor still taking damage. Time not on enemy side, and counter logic gaming. The clock keeps ticking. Smithy down to half, though. There's still some good Inox poke, but it's still only six seconds it. away Can't from the inhib getting killed. I don't know how they get onto this one. A lot of pokes still coming through. Double lift down to half. And Trashy the taunt. cannon has switched focus. They're actually taunting the cannon. They can't kill it, but they can off tank it. And this is going to be the push on in finally with the Baron minions. Enemy esports unwilling to commit hard enough. They're afraid of Zion Spartan's Meganar, but now that the time's out, maybe enemy esports goes back in. A big wave bot lane. The uh, Zir zoning turret is timed out, and Dragon's in 25 seconds. Again, this would be Dragon 5 for enemy esports, or it's the big Dragon 3 move speed buff for CLG. And it's going to be for CLG, 100%. Enemy have to lick their wounds, clean up the minions. They will get some global gold from the secondary turret going down. Uh-oh, Otter pretty far out. He does use the scrying orb, so he will not get picked. Looks like they actually want to answer. Can they get there in time? They're going to rush this. Double dead inhibitor. A lost fight means CLG wins the game outright. Flares spots the team. This is going to be a tough battle. All CLG has to do is buy time, and the game ends in their favor from the top lane inhibitor being dead. They're going to try and steal it from Nunu. This is Smithy's time to shine. Can he get the combo Zion's correct? Zion's almost mega gnar. He's got the full rage bar. 
A lot of soldiers up right now from Pobel. Gonna wait it out. Minions working on the Nexus turret up on top, by the way. That line of super minions will take out the Nexus turret by themselves if enemy do not finish this fight soon. And Meganar's about to end, though. Zion Spartan back to mini means it gets a little bit better. How uh, good is this fight steal? He gets it. CLG keeps the dragon off the table. And a huge tempered fate. Body drop to buy a bit of time. In goes Flares. Looks for the back line. And when he goes down, they trade for Pobel. Belter, a 4v4 and CLG are on the hunt. Dublin spell shields the stun and they chase in for Otter. He's gonna get slowed by X Smithy, but will there be follow up? Yes, there is. Trashy goes down. It's a three versus four. CLG on the hunt. Otter oh. gets the kill. Can he get the outplay? He looks for Dublin, but he goes down. There's the slow and Inox. That's gonna be the game. Counter Logic Gaming in 48 minutes. Woo! And the teleport up to the Super Minion Zion just to gain a little bit of distance and they're going for the Nexus turrets. There's no way this Ooh. Janna stops this push. Doublelift has super minions in the base. An incredibly hard fought game. The chance for CLG are in the audience. They earned it in Counter Logic Gaming and week three tied for first place. What a fight from enemy. Absolutely. Man, I get to keep casting all the fun ones, man. What a great Sounds game like it's taking one. your toll. Sounds like it's taking its toll. Buddy. Doesn't matter. Hashtag worth in all chat. Everyone can tell. This was such a fun match to play. Such a fun match to watch. Enemy Esports, I feel like, are still continuing to improve a bit over time. They're new to the LCS. They lost a teammate, and they had probably the closest game of the split of any team against number one Counter Logic Gaming. I want to know what a consistent enemy esports looks like, but we do know what CLG looks like, and that's the number one team here in the North American LCS. Yep, able to tie it up with Team Liquid at the top of the standings. Mm -hmm. Five and one, their only loss to Team Solomid, who's only one game behind them. In North America here, it seems everybody beats everybody. We've got Five teams again, I believe, at five and one or four and two, the top of the table, packed with talent of teams that beat each other on a regular basis. Of course, CLG will face Team Liquid two weeks from now, actually. It's going to be their final opponent in the first round. Maybe that'll prove who's the best team in North America, definitively, but right now. Week five, when we get to the point where every team has matched up. Mm -hmm. Things get a little bit more clear. And as we look at enemy esports, their last three opponents are Cloud9, Team Impulse, Team Dignitas. Teams that are actually quite close to them in the standings. Teams you might expect them to have a good chance at beating as they round out their last three opponents in the first round. A game like that's impressive. We keep seeing more new things from Inox. His Zerith 4, 2, and 5. Overall, pretty good. If he had hit like one or two more cues, they might have won the game, but you can't expect 100% skill shot accuracy. Afro Moo on the Bard. Definitely justifying the bans we saw against CLG early in the split. Mm -hmm. So many flashes forced, so many picks from the champion. And many a magical journey able to yeah. earn large advantages for CLG I mean, you uh, with saw, enemy having to commit multiple resources. You saw where there were three straight bard bans against Aphromoo at the very start of the split. No one was willing to play until TSM took it themselves and then Aphromoo went back to playing the champion now twice in a row. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's been in champ select in every single CLG game this split so far and it's a fun <laughs> champion to watch. I'm glad we're seeing him more common now. The, the Bard-Sivir combo especially seems pretty great, just being able to start fights There's so many things very you, far away. So many things good. you can set up with the Bard ultimate. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's been a, a good split for CLG. I mean, the Golden Age ended. We're on to the Platinum Age now. We're three weeks in. They lost again to TSM, and they're still in first place, so they've passed another hurdle from last split around. Pobalter's looking good. Zion's looking good. The team's looking good. Maybe CLG keeps this one going. For now, we're going to send it down to Riv, who's on the blue side after that wild game.